السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آل سيدنا محمد وبارك وسلم رب شح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقبة من لساني يفقه قولي سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا أما بعد Your respected listeners, alhamdulillah, we have completed 26 days of fast. And we are now on the few minutes left for the beginning of the powerful, long-awaited night of Laylatul Qadr, or 27th night. But since people usually refer this as Laylatul Qadr, so I use that. Otherwise, of course, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows the reality of what night that is. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions regarding the virtue in Anzalnahu fi Laylatul Qadr wa ma adraka ma Laylatul Qadr. Indeed, we have revealed the Quran in this night of Qadr. Wa ma adraka ma Laylatul Qadr. And do you know what is the night of power? This is to create shawq, this is to create raghba within us, to create a desire that we want to find out what is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is referring to here. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then explains. Laylatul Qadr khayrun min alfi shahr. This is the night that is better than a thousand months. And uh, notice Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says khayrun. It is better. What is the value of that is? Reality is only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. Based on a person's ikhlas, based on a person's um, sincerity, based on a person's tadarra, based on his humility, based on his humbleness, the du'as that he's going to make are obviously going to be, uh, you know, the ibadat is going to be valued based on that. So everyone's valued differently based on their situation that they are in. Uh, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, says khayr ibn al-fishad is better. And a thousand months just to, for us to put into perspective, um, just to put into perspective what um, we're referring to here, um, I'm sure you heard and you've seen some flyers and WhatsApp uh, infographics. And these things are helpful just to kind of make us realize uh, what we're speaking about until we don't see the numbers. Sometimes we don't appreciate it. So on, a, on an average eight hour night, like how we have over here from, seven, uh, from uh, uh, 8, 10 to uh, like 3, 10, um, about what seven hours or eight hours so in that night if that one night is better than uh, a thousand months we know it's at least minimum to a thousand it has to be more than that but let's just take minimum a thousand months a thousand months is um, 83 years 83 years so um 83 years of ibadah, equivalent in one night. And one hour of that one night is going to be equivalent to about 10 years or 9.8 years, or you can say 10 years. One hour of ibadah is equivalent to 10 years of ibadah. And then one minute of ibadah, one minute, just one minute, you're sitting down and you're saying tasbih subhanallah, 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 like 25 times. Uh, or 30 times or 50 times, that's better than 58 days of worship. Or you could say about two months. One minute equivalent to two months. One hour equivalent to 10 years. Okay, and then one second, subhanAllah, just one second of ibadah is equivalent to 23 hours of worship. Only one day. One second is about a day of worship. These things are yeah, unfathomable. We can't understand. But when it's time for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give, when it's time for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, gives, you know, based on his, as they say, apne shayana shan ke se. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives based on his uh, grace, gives on his, and, uh, on his, based on his greatness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving. And so this is what we're seeing tonight and on occasions like this. Allah jalla jalaluhu is really not giving based on our actions. He's giving based on his greatness. Um, uh, 
I was thinking this, that if we were to know this ibadat and this, uh, this virtue, and if we were to have yaqeen on this virtue, okay? If we were to have yaqeen on this virtue, how many of us probably would have, if that if we knew that this is once a year, this day is going to come? Once a year. So what are our chances of getting it? One in 365, right? So um, we would have definitely, I'm sure, if we had yaqeen, that if you make ibadat for one minute on any of these days, you're going to get the reward for 9.8 or 10 years of ibadah. How many of us would not, would not have been able to do that? All of us would have definitely, most definitely take time out a minute or half hour and every night would try to do that would try to do the um ibadat for one hour or even one minute or a few minutes because it's um too good of a deal one too good of a deal you cannot allow this type of thing to pass by subhanallah so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have left it like that but Allah Jalla Jalaluhu did not do so. Instead, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa informed us that this Ramadan, this Laytul Qadr is most likely in Ramadan. Instead, actually, why don't we read what the Quran says? Inna anzalnahu fi Laylatul Qadr. Indeed, Indeed, we have revealed the Qur'an in the night of power. Now, the Qur'an, we know, was not revealed outside of Ramadan. We know that the Qur'an was not revealed outside of Ramadan. The Qur'an was revealed in Ramadan. So, hence, this ayah, this surah, this surah is a testimony to the fact that very, very likely, almost certainly, Laylatul Qadr has got to be in Ramadan. Because the Quran is, the Quran, in Surah Al Qadr is saying, oh, we revealed the Quran in night of Qadr, night of power. And we know that the Quran was revealed in, in, the, in Ramadan. Shahru Ramadan, Alladhi Unzila Fihi Al Quran. Allah very clearly says, Shahru Ramadan, Alladhi Unzila Fihi Al Quran. The month of Ramadan in which the Quran was revealed. Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is making it clear. So alhamdulillah, we know that Ramadan is the month in which we are hosting the Laylatul Qadr. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could have left it for all 30 days. It still would have been very worth it for us to spend an hour every night in order to get 9.8 years of ibadat. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, instead through Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, informed us that it's going to be towards the last portion. Last portion of the month. And then went further to say that it is actually last 10 days from there, the odd nights of those 10 days. And then even some narrations, it actually pushes it to the last three. Meaning 25th, 27th and 29th or yes 25th 27th and 29th and many of the scholars of the past had this inclination that it would be actually on the 27th itself hence this is how it became known as Laylatul Qadr so dear friends I was saying that if, if we knew the virtue and we believed in the virtue of this, then for us to sacrifice even the entire year, a little bit of time, even half hour or 10 minutes or five minutes, we would be willing to do it. People go to play the, play the lottery. People go to play the lottery, play the lottery, and then they know the chance of winning is something like one in three hundred million, one in two hundred fifty million, and yet they're still going. I'm just saying, oh, maybe I'll win, maybe I'll win. Subhanallah. Here for us, 
Allah made it so easy. Did not leave it open for 12 months. And not even for 30 days. Now we're being told within just 10 days. And also from those 10 days, just five odd nights. And from those odd five nights, the last three. Now, there are scholars who, who are of the opinion that Laylatul Qadr rotates. It is not one specific night every year. It rotates. Every year is a different. And we know that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not inform us of the exact date of it. He came out of his house to inform and he saw two sahaba or uh, two of his companions having an argument and he said that I was about to come and share with you the date but Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala lifted it away from me. Okay. And he threw the the bad uh, environment of argumentation. This is what, this is what happened. That we were deprived of getting the actual date of the Laylatul Qadr. But ulama say this is actually Rahma of Allah. Because had we known the exact date, there would still be hundreds and thousands and millions of people, unfortunately, unfortunately, who would not be making ibadah as they should be. And because of that, what would have happened? They would be become extremely mahroom, extremely deprived of this blessing. That John Buchkar, John Tehue, Apne Ibadatniki, that even though you knew it, you still did not make Ibadat. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, alhamdulillah, if in that case, has, there's mercy for the sinners, there's mercy for the mutabhafileen, for those who are unaware of what's happening, mercy for them. That they, they are, um, you know, disconnected. Uh, and if they intentionally were to do this, that would have definitely been very sad. So Alhamdulillah, it's now left open-ended. That's one thing. But there are still alamat and signs. There are still alamat and signs of this. What those signs are, people say various things. But they are mentioned in Nabi. So people look at how Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam performed ibadah, and that he had some water, some moisture on his. forehead when he made um, you know sujood so based on that we say that many people use that amongst many many other signs that are mentioned in the books of hadith and I don't want to really make this a full detailed talk on Laylatul Qadr or uh, that this has been Mulana Shibli did tafsir of the surah and I know Mufti bin Haj has been speaking about it in his, in his tafsir and his uh, talks etc but I still, today, since it's just a little, I have never spoken about it. I wanted to share a few words. Well, when, when we were speaking about um, the signs of it, I was uh, going to mention that Ibn Taymiyyah, rahmatullahi alayhi, Ibn Taymiyyah, rahmatullahi alayhi, uh, who is a scholar that the Hanbalis today and the Salafis follow more so uh, than, for example, the other four Imams. Uh, and who is not necessarily known amongst the world as um, a Sufi or someone of that, you know, when I say Sufi, I'm meaning whatever you want to think of it, leaving it open-ended. But in a sense that people who attribute themselves to be following the Taymiyyah, they get very allergic from the word Sufi, very allergic to dreams, very allergic to ilham, kashf, and these type of words. Although Ibn Taymiyyah, rahmatullahi alayhi, actually, um, uh, was all that. His book, his books, his Fatawa ibn Taymiyyah mention all sorts of different interesting things of this sort that, that his followers would never dream that their shaykh said things of this sort. So Ibn Taymiyyah mentions regarding Laylatul Qadr. He says, Sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens up uh, the, the exact date of Laylatul Qadr for certain people in their dream. In their dream, or while they're even awake, or while they are even awake. So, this can happen that they get this feeling that today or tonight will be Laylatul Qadr, or it is Laylatul Qadr right now, etc. 
Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi says this can happen. Fayra anwaraha, he's able to witness and see the nur. Yesterday we talked about uh, the nur of good deeds, right? And we talked about how when you do a good deed, the nur that comes into the heart and the sin has the blackness and the darkness that overtakes the heart. And similarly, the good deeds, we have a nur that comes under the face and sins have a blackness that comes under the face. Uh, so I said that this was not something that necessarily every single person can witness and see. We have to have something in ourselves to be able to witness that. So um, similarly, these people, they sense a certain type of nur. They sense what? A certain type of nur. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens up to them the reality. Um, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens up the reality to them that today is one of those special nights. Allahu Akbar. So this is what Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi alayhi um, mentions. And then he says, or some of these awliya or pious people or general people may come and tell you. They may, you may not see the dream. You may not have the vision. But someone else will come and tell you that this is the night of power or it's about to come. And sometimes it opens up. The reality of this opens up on the heart. That a person through his heart is able to witness and sense that this is what's happening. Okay, let's go to a famous Shafi'i scholar um, uh, and from the, uh, from the uh, um, classical Shafi'i scholars. Imam Nawawi, rahmanullah, he says, فَإِنَّا تُرَى The Layl Qadr is actually witnessed. It's seen. وَقَدْ حَقَّقَهَا مَنْ شَاءَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَ مَنِي آدَمْ كُلَّ سَنَ فِي رَمَضَانِ And whoever Allah wills from the children of Adam, they are able to sense it every single year in Ramadan. كَمَا تَظَهَرَتْ عَلِهِ هَذِهِ الْحَدِيثِ Just like all these ahadith are very clear, there are signs there. So these people are able to pick up on those signs. وَأَخْبَارُ الصَّالِحِينَ بِهَا And the stories of the pious are present as well. وَرُؤْيَتُهُمْ لَهَا أَكْثَرُ مِنْ أَنْ تُحْصَرُ They're viewing their vision of the night of power is more than you can enumerate. Okay, then حافظ بن حجر رحمة الله عليه mentions مَنْ رَآ لَيْلَةَ الْقَدْرِ أُسْتُحِبَّ لَهُ كِتْمَانُ وَذَحَلِكَ Whoever saw the night of power, whoever seen it, sensed it, ustuhibba lahu, it is preferable for him that he sh not share this and that he keeps it to himself. That he keeps it to himself. Why is that? You might be thinking, why would you sh keep know about something and not share it? If you knew your Zayl al Qadr, wouldn't you send a mass text, mass WhatsApp message? Today's Zayl al Qadr. So then he mentions, fi dalik, the wisdom behind this, anha karama. This is a karama. This is a miracle. Wal karama tu yambari kitmanuha bila khilafin. And a karama. And a karama. There's no doubt about it. Um, there is no doubt about it that it should be hidden. It should not be shared. I'm sorry. Uh, yes, karama people, if, if like for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has gifted you with something, which is what's a karama? Karama is like a mu'ajiza, a miracle. However, mu'ajiza is with the prophets and karama is with the non-prophets. When righteous awliya and friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they're able to achieve something which is kharqun lil aada, goes against the trend goes against the norm. It's not normal for a person to be able to say, you know, fly. It's not normal for a person to say, to be able to, um, you know, have uh, one, five people's food and 50 people are eating from there. Right? This is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's father. And that's what you call the karama of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, that he's giving to him. So if this is happening, you don't go share this. You don't, we don't go share that. Right? And because why? The, it will be taken away. It will be taken away. I remember uh, my ustaz, 
the dhillu al ali you're saying you know people would call and one lady she used to have uh, she used to call, tell him one of our, another ustad one burhan another teacher of mine his aunt if i remember properly had this thing that mashallah he would um she would while doing salawat in the kitchen or while cooking or whatnot anywhere else yani i'm why i mean to say kitchen that even if she's not on her musalla even if she's not in her bedroom like on her janamas just in you know in the kitchen also doing chores if she would be doing salat as salam um she would all of a sudden begin to smell a very beautiful fragrance of beautiful fragrance and like a v- unbelievable type of ether and uh, this would happen only with salawat this is a karama that most people don't get allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you know gifted similarly there are of course many many examples of people you know who are not necessarily famous scholars but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens up ajeeb things for them if they go become proud of that if they go tell the whole world about it then they are you know then maybe that's not a karama maybe that's not a karama uh because why a lot of miracles happen to even people who are not muslims people who are fasiq people who are fajr it happens to them as well uh there are different words for that in the books so there's istidraj and there's irhas um that these are uh sometimes allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows a magician or a mushrik or someone else to do something which is not obviously going to be called a karama istidraj the word i use for istidraj what's that that's when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows someone <clears throat> to think that they're achieving something that is when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows someone to think that they are achieving something properly correct when they actually are act- when they are actually um you know uh very disobedient to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so they will actually end up thinking they will end up actually thinking that allah is being so kind to me i must be obedient servant of allah that's why this is happening <clears throat> when in reality that's not the case when in reality that's not the case this is called istidraj and this is what we call basically letting someone slip letting someone slip and um daraja is means um stairs and steps so istidraj is allowing someone to fall down the steps slowly when you slip and fall it doesn't happen immediately it does not happen immediately it happens after some time and you don't realize how it's happening instead before you know it <clears throat> it happens that's what we're speaking about here istidraj as a general concept something we need to all seek allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's protection from that a person is being allowed to be misled away from the deen and does he is unaware of that this is the danger of it unaware of it so i was saying that righteous people who actually have a karama they don't share it and they always are humbled and they don't think about much about it uh one of our beloved ustads who shared alhamdulillah his, his words with us twice two saturdays in a row at the beginning part of this month for our urdu program um alhamdulillah you all hopefully benefited for those who especially who understand urdu mona abbas nadwi damad barakatuhum so he had a very uh, famous statement he would always say and it would be al istiqamatu fawqa al fi karamatin he would say istiqama and steadfastness is more superior than a thousand miracles 
We don't follow the deen for miracles. Our deen is not about promotion of miracles or trying to achieve miracles. Miraculously, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us something, mashallah, but that's not what we do ibadah for. That's not what we're asking for on such nights. Ya Allah, give me karamat. Right? That's not what we're asking for. We're asking for Allah's pleasure. We're asking for forgiveness. That's a key thing. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happens to um, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala happens to give you something, mashallah, unasked, you didn't ask for it, you got it, that's a different thing. But generally speaking, these type of karamat is, is something that happens without definitely us demanding, asking, expecting, wishing for. But what was the point that Mulana was saying? He was saying that it's more virtuous, uh, istiqam, a simple action that after Ramadan finishes, if we are reading five Jews now, if they were reading five Jews now, then after Ramadan, at least read three Jews. If we are fasting, mashallah, of course we all are fasting every single day, then at least fast, you know, every other day or, um, or uh, not every other day, 13th, 14th, and 15th, three days of the month. And mashallah, someone wants to take it to the next level, sunnah of Rasulullah, then Mondays and Thursdays, alhamdulillah. Yes, there is sunnah and da'amud of every other day, but uh, at least we can, I think generally speaking, we can give advice for 13, 14, and 15th of every lunar, the lunar nights and days. Uh, and inshallah also, if possible, Mondays and Thursdays. So istiqama, what we're talking about, that's a karama after Ramadan. We cannot do 20, 20 rakats of taraweeh and 8 rakats of tahajjud. At least we can do 6 rakats of tahajjud or 4 rakats of tahajjud or even 8 rakats of tahajjud. So if someone is, cons- can- is able to do so after Ramadan, then alhamdulillah, this is what you're going to say is our karama. This is uh, the karama that we're speaking about. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he allows us to uh, f- uh, fulfill this um, and that he grants us istiqama. This is the karama you all need to be asking for me tonight and you need to be asking for yourself. That Ya Allah grant all of us istiqama. Ya Allah grant all of us istiqama and allow us to achieve your pleasure throughout our life even well after Ramadan ends. So after mentioning what Imam Nawawi mentions and what um, Ibn Hajar mentions and what Ibn Taymiyyah rahmatullahi mentions I want to share with you something that happened to me today which is I was uh, speaking to one of my uh, very close uh, teachers and friends and he said you know right now I just got a phone call from so and so a person who I know mashallah, and he said he, is, he narrated to me from his father that his father, Alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like usually puts in his heart, and even right now, he put in his heart, that tonight, the night we are entering soon, the 27th night of Ramadan, this year, is going to be Laylatul Qadr. And immediately after that, he told me, please do not address, you know, attribute it to him, and do not share that, uh, uh, that he is the one who witnessed or, or sensed it. And immediately, I, I, you know, I was thinking, subhanAllah, my mind did not go for at first, why he was saying that? Only then I realized, based on what Ibn Hajj said, that this is a karama that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala best bestows him with. And he, of course, wants to remain hidden and does not want uh, that to be attributed to him. So this is something I'm sharing with all of you. And you may share with others as well. That inshallah, of course, this is not a qat'i thing. This is not something which is uh, a completely uh, definitive. This is simply a sign uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows to people. A person does not have to necessarily take or not take, but mashallah, it, it gives us some hope. And hopefully we can, uh, with greater yaqeen, make dua. I think it all comes down to that. There's a saying in Urdu, jis raat ki bhi qadar ki jai, wo shab qadar hai. And jis raat ki bhi qadar ki jai, wo shab qadar hai. Whatever night you value, that is your, that's your layout al qadar. Right? Because qadar has multiple meanings. Qadar also means value. They have not valued Allah the way He ought to be valued. They haven't appreciated Allah the way He ought to be appreciated. So any night that we appreciate can become very powerful. Not to say that that actually is going to be get the reward for 83 years, but 
any night in which we make sincere tawbah or conviction, alhamdulillah, that's a new chapter for all of us. Uh, so I'm hoping, inshallah, that tonight we can, we can start doing that. Now we have only half an hour left for this night to begin. Um, at least in Chicago. Maybe some of you are listening elsewhere. Uh, so we need to start preparing from right now. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa hadith is man qama laylatul qadr imanan wa yahdi saban ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhambi. Whoever stands up in the night of qadr with iman. So number one, our iman has to be correct. Our iman has to be present. Our faith in Allah has to be there. Uh, okay, that has to be there. With a person, a disbeliever, a person who doesn't have faith, that's not going to be for him or her. Number two, ihtisaban. That we have to have expectations from Allah. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give me the reward. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to accept my prayers. Allah is listening to me. Allah is looking at me. Allah is looking forward to me standing up and raising my hand. When I say, Ya, Ab ya Allah, Ya Rabbi, Allah is saying, Labayka Ya Abdi. Like the hadith mentions that, Here I am, O my servant. Here I am, O my servant. Subhanallah. My Lord doesn't need to say that. I, you know, but here's how excited Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if I may use that word, of course, you know, with no human connotation there, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is. Uh, looking forward to ajib 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 subhanallah just remember that hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam where he said that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is um waiting you know for a person to repent uh when a person this uh, when a per, uh, when a person has not come towards allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a long time When a person does not come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a long time and he is distant from the deen. And then eventually one day he decides to come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How it happens? Nabi Ali Sallallahu mentioned hadith, Ma tawattana rajulun muslimun al masjid al sal al masajid al salati wa dhikr, illa tabashbash Allahu lahu kama yatabashbash ahlul ghaibi bi ghaibihim idha qadim alihim. Ajib. That there isn't a person who makes the masjid his place. Notice the hadith, tawattana. He makes it his watan. He makes it his place. He makes it his home for salah and for dhikr. Except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I don't, you, you can understand what tabashbasha means, right? Obviously, tabashbasha means to be happy, to be excited. The when, when, uh, uh, when, tabash, when someone is tab does tabashbush, you come out of your house to greet your guest. You uh, uh, it open arms, you welcome him, uh, and you've got a huge smile on your face. So what does this mean? With tabashbush of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, means that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showering this person with happiness, with his, with his kindness, and with his tawfiq, and with his forgiveness. All of those things that you can imagine when a person does to a visiting person. But Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam goes further and just says that the way is any of you who have, um, who are missing one of your relatives, one of your friends, one of the members of your household who's gone away for a long time. And then you he comes to your home. Then he comes back. A friend or relative, some, some of us may not have seen our relatives for past few months because of the crisis. Okay. And right now, Imagine if they were to just pop, you know, knock on your door. How excited you would be to see your sister, your brother, your mom, or your dad, right? Subhanallah. Well, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, similarly, he gets so happy to receive a person in his house the way you would receive one of your relatives who has gone away for a long time and then comes. This is what we're talking about. The, the, the ta'alluq that Allah has with all of us. How many of us, mashallah, who are listening right now? We're regulars in the masjid. The men I'm speaking about. And the women, mashallah, were regular in sending their men or would regular to attend tarawih or attend programs, etc. And today, our heart is aching that we're not able to go. So, inshallah, if you are capable of going and your local ordinance of your masjid and your governor and your go uh, state government and local area allows it, then don't uh, follow the protocol, follow the full protocol, protective measures, do everything, and then still visit. But if that, for, for most of the communities, 
that is not an option. So, inshallah, but still your desire and your jazbah. Tonight you have to be saying this to Allah. Ya Allah, I was a regular. I would have definitely come in Ramadan. I would have definitely been there 27 night. I would have definitely been in Nafid Atikaf. I would have been there in Sunnah Atikaf. I would have been there from Asr till Isha every day. I would have been there from Isha till Fajr every blessed night. Ya Allah, I'm not able to come there. Ya Allah, but please still grant me the thawab of all of that, the ibadah of all of that, and all the good I was able to do in the past. Allow me to, uh, you know, be achieving that. This is something, my dear brothers and sisters, that we need to remember that if we do ibadat with yaqeen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will accept our, our, our ibadat, then you'll see it'll be easy for us to cry. It'll be easy for us to repent. It will be easy for us to pray with this focus that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is listening. And when you turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with this fervor, with this intention that Allah, you are listening to me, then most definitely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is listening and will be uh, willing to not only forgive, but change our sins to good deeds. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, whoever does good deeds and has faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Allah and he repents, Allah will change his sins into good deeds. Allah will change sins and good deeds. Allah says in the Quran, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ Right? In Surah Zumar, Allah says, Oh, my servants who have oppressed themselves, who have wronged themselves, do not become despondent from the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Indeed, Allah will forgive all the sins and He is forgiving and merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in uh, Surah Hajr, Nabi Ibadi, inform my servants, Anni al Ghafur Rahim, that I am the most forgiving, I am the most merciful. Wa anna adabi, and my punishment, it is a painful torment. Notice Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings forgiveness first. And then notice Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about himself that he himself is forgiving and merciful. He doesn't say this for adab. He doesn't say, I am the avenger. I am the punisher. He doesn't say that. Instead, he says, my punishment is, is very strong. He doesn't attribute that to himself. But when it comes to forgiving, um, when it comes to forgiving, instead, what does he do? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses it to him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses this to himself and he says, this is what I am doing. I am the uh, most forgiving and most merciful. Uh, Allah Azza wa says in the Quran, شيء, in Surah A'raf, that my mercy is encompassing of everything. My mercy encompasses everything. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Hadith Qudsi, Ya bina Adam, O son of Adam, lo that, oh son of Adam, if your sins were to, I'm saying hypothetically, if your sins were to reach the end of the horizons, if, your, if, if they were to reach till the top of the clouds, till the eye can see, your sins are piling up and piling up and piling up and piling up until they have finished up your entire home, your entire city, your entire town, your entire state, your entire country, the continent, the entire earth. And then all the galaxies and the, and karte and, karte keep on going and going and going and going and it's touching the heavens. Subhanallah. What happens? Thumma laqitani. Then you meet me. La tushik bi shay'a. Without ascribing partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You meet me without ascribing partners to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What's going to happen? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive a person's sins, all of them. And he says, Wala ubali, and I could care less. I could care less. I could care less. No one can say, Why, Ya Allah, why did you do this? Because for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's one beautiful dua that comes to mind. Ya man tasurruhu ta'ati, wa la tadurruhu ma'asiyati. Oh, the one, oh, the one who my obedience pleases him and my disobedience does not upset him and does not affect him, does not harm him. Oh, Allah, grant me that which will, which will be pleasing to you. Grant me that which will be pleasing to you and forgive me for that which will not harm you. How amazing this dua is. Oh Allah, grant me that 
which will ha- make you happy. I mean, what are we asking? We're asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness. And we're asking Allah to grant us tawfiq or tawbah. And when we, uh, when we get forgiven and we uh, have a clean slate and we've done tawbah, won't Allah be happy? Of course he will be. And then we say, Ya Allah, forgive that which will not harm you. My sins do not harm you. No matter how much I sin, it will not harm Allah. And the presence of my sins does not harm Allah. And the forgiveness of my sins will not like decrease in Allah's greatness. Subhanallah. So this is what we are, this is what from the duas that are there that we have to be asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya Allah, please, I have brought a earth full of sins, but I know you are bringing an earth full of forgiveness. As it comes also in hadith Qudsi, that whoever comes to me walking, I come to him running. And whoever comes to me with an earth full of sins, I come to him with an earth full of forgiveness. Indeed, it is your it is only the deeds, it's only your deeds that I am collecting and I'm gathering and I am um, preserving. I'm not gonna add anything in it. Whoever on the day of judgment finds good in his book of deeds, فَلْيَحْمَدِ He should thank Allah. وَجَدَ غَيْرَ ذَلِكَ And whoever finds anything beyond that, besides that, فَلَا يَلُومَنَّ إِلَّا نَفْسَهُ فَلَا يَلُومَنَّ إِلَّا نَفْسَهُ He should blame no one besides himself. Dear friends, this is something for all of us to remember that our time may come anytime. And when we go there, we're going to look at our deeds I hope and I pray and I beg Allah that he does not make us amongst those who are in for shock, who are surprised at how Allah does. This is what happens, right? How many times in the exam a person gets shocked? How many times a person purchases something and then sees a bill gets shocked? But then there's always sadar, you can always make it up, make up for it. But in the akhirah, there's absolutely no making up for it at all. This is something we have to be doing right now we have to be asking Allah Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said nas, O people tubu ila Allah repent to Allah fa inni atubu fil yawmi ilayhi mi'ata maratin for indeed I repent to Allah every day a hundred times a hundred times Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is saying I'm making tawbah to Allah uh, and Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu said inna kun, in kunna la na'uddu li rasulillahi fil majlis al wahidi mi'ata marrah sometimes we'll be sitting with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Sometimes we'd be sitting with the Prophet ﷺ in one majlis and we would be sitting um, and what would he say? Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a hundred times he would be saying Rabbi ghfirli wa tub alayya Oh Allah, forgive me wa tub alayya and repent, accept my repentance Indeed, you are the most willing, the one who accepts repentance the most and the most merciful. Think about that. Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in one majlis is saying this a hundred times. Ya Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability to say this a hundred times at least a day. Rabbi ghfir li wa tub alayya. Inna ka anta tawabu rahim Rabbi ghfir li wa tub alayya. Inna ka anta tawabu rahim Rabbi ghfir li wa tub alayya. Inna ka anta tawabu rahim Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned another hadith. He said, well, I swear in the being in whose hands is my life. If you were not to sin, Allah would took, take you away. And Allah would bring another group of people who would sin. And then they would seek forgiveness from Allah. Then Allah will forgive them. Meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to show his sifa of of forgiveness. He wants to show his sifa of mercy. And tonight is the night for him to expose that. Tonight is a night to manifest that. Tonight and other blessed nights of Ramadan are a time in a place where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness becomes manifest. So he wants us, not to say that he wants us to sin, but instead he wants us to repent and he wants us to seek forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, Nabi alayhi salatu salam, dear brothers and sisters, mentioned in the hadith, the Sayyidul Istighfar. What is Sayyidul Istighfar? You've, you've heard us covering many times in Hizbul Adham. I hope you are joining the night programs if you can and listening to it later on. It is a dua that's mentioned in the Hizbul Adham as well. And of course in Bukhari as well, Bukhari Sharif. Um, and that is the leader of all the Istighfar. What is the leader? 
that if you recite this and you'd pass away on any given day or any given night, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, you will be from the people of Jannah. Man qalaha min nari muqinan biha. But he said, you have to say it with yaqeen. You have to say it with conviction. Whoever says this at night with conviction, he dies that night in Jannah. Whoever recites this during the day and with yaqeen and dies that day is Jannah. So why would we not, my dear brothers and sisters, make a habit of reciting this? Please make dua that Allah gives you and I, all of us, tawfiq to be able to do so. The sayyid al-istighfar is, Allahumma anta rabbi la ilaha illa an khalaqtani wa ana abduka wa ana ala ahdika wa wa'adika ma sata'at. A'udhu bika min sharri ma sana'at. Abu ulaka bi ni'matika alayya wa abu bithambi. The dua card. I hope by now all of you have the Darul Salam's dua card that we've been saying. Please make a habit of reading every single day. Uh, so, it's this dua is on that dua card. So, for you blessed souls who are always, mashallah, punctual on reciting this every morning and evening, the dua card. Alhamdulillah, you're in good hands. You've got the dua card with you, and you've got this dua with you there. And inshallah, any night and any day, we got really nothing to worry about. I mean, you have to have yaqeen on this hadith. If I read it with conviction, I need to not worry. If my night is, tonight is the night for me to leave, alhamdulillah, I have to be convinced and I have to be content that Allah will grant me jannah because I have truly with sincerity, for example, read this dua. May Allah make this a reality for me, a reality for you all, reality for your siblings, for your spouses, for your children, for your parents. Ameen. Which is, oh Allah, you're my Lord. There's none worthy of worship except for you. You have created me. I am your servant. And I am remaining as firm as possible upon the pledge I have made with you. And upon the promise I have made with you, oh Allah. I turn to you with my uh, bless, with the blessings you have showered upon me. I seek refuge in you from the evil that I have done. And I turn to you with all the blessings you have showered upon me. And also, I turn to you with all the sins I have done, unfortunately. Oh Allah, please forgive me. Indeed, none can forgive the sins except for you. This is the dua that we can be reciting, uh, inshallah ta'ala, every day and including tonight. Abu Hurairah radiallahu anhu mentions that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa mentioned on behalf of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a hadith Qudsi. And he said, Adhnaba abdun dhamban. A servant once committed a sin. Faqala Allah mufirli dhambi. He said, oh Allah, please forgive my sins. Faqala tabarak wa ta'ala adhnaba abdi dhamban. Fa'alima anna lahu rabban yakfiru dhamb. Wa yakhudu dhamb. Allah says, my servant so-and-so has committed a sin. But he knows that he has a Lord that will forgive sins and will punish uh, people for their sins. Hence, he has repented to me. So Allah gets happy. Then that person goes back to his sin. Oh Allah, please forgive me. He says, that my Lord knows uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, look at this servant of mine. Look at this servant of mine. That he knows he has to, uh, he, has a, he, has, uh, he has a Lord that will um, reward and what will punish a person. And hence, he has sought forgiveness from me. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes pleased with this person. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also Forgives this person. And then he goes back. He goes back and he sins. He says, oh my Lord, please forgive my sin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَذْنَبَ عَبْدِي ذَنْبًا Nabi is saying in this hadith of Bukhari that this person commits a sin back to back. He's repenting, Allah forgives him. Then he repent, then he for, then, then he makes a sin, then Allah repent, then, uh, then he repents, Allah forgives him. And every time Allah says the same thing to him, we don't hear it, my brothers and sisters, but this is happening every day with us. This is happening every night with us. That Allah is telling us that I appreciate the fact that you. Understand that I have the full authority and power to punish you and destroy you for your sin. And I also have the ability and the will to forgive you. And that you are now coming to me in humility and humbleness and asking for forgiveness. At the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells his servant, I'mal mashit, do as you wish. Faqad ghafartu lak, I have forgiven. Subhanallah. Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that 
لو أن ابن لابن آدم ما وادي من ذهب أحب أن يكون له واديان ولن يملأ فاه إلا التراب ويتوب الله على من تاب and he said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلْ يَبْسُطُ يَدَهُ بِاللَّيْلِ لِيَتُوبَ مُسِئُ النَّهَارِ وَيَبْسُطُ يَدَهُ بِالنَّهَارِ لِيَتُوبَ مُسِئُ اللَّيْلِ حَتَّى تَطْلَعِ الشَّمْسِ مِنْ مَغْرِبِهَا Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, in a manner that befits him, extends, opens up his hand at night so that the one who sinned all day can repent. And opens up his hand, i.e. he opens up his court in the day so that the one who sinned all night can repent until the sun shall rise from the west. The Prophet ﷺ said another hadith related by a Muslim. لَاللَّهُ أَشَدُّ فَرَحًا بِتَوْبَةِ عَبْدِهِ Allah is so happy, so happy, so happy when a person repents. He is even more happy than حِينَ يَتُوبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ أَحَدِكُمْ كَانَ عَلَى رَاحَلَتِهِ بِأَرْضِ فُلَاتٍ And the example that Rasul ﷺ gave that Allah Allah is how happy? More happy than one of you if he was on his conveyance in a desert. Nothing around him. Nothing around him. He, it's him and his camel with all his goods, his food, his water, everything. And then, unfortunately, that camel ran away. Maybe, you know, he went to sleep and the camel uh, was able to break through the ropes and run away. And his food, his drink was all there. Now he is sitting the nearest place, uh, nearest oasis is 50 miles away. He is in the middle of this desert. How is he going to get there? فَأَيْسَ He gave up. فَأَتَى شَجَرَةً He comes to a tree and he lies in the shade of the tree waiting for death to take him in the state of hunger, thirst, dehydration, you name it. Al, all of a sudden, he opens his eyes and he sees this entire camel with all his food and drink right there standing above his head. فَأَخَذَ بِخِطَامِهَا And he holds on to is the, 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 he takes the bridle, bridle of, the, of, the, of the camel and out of extreme happiness, he doesn't even know what he's saying. And he says, Allahumma anta abdi, O oh Allah, you are my servant, wa ana rabbuk, and I am your Lord. Min al -farh. He's so happy that he doesn't even know he's gone, he's lost his mind, he's lost his wits, and he's saying things he doesn't even know what he's saying. Imagine, the, look at this example. Look at the example that Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is giving. That this person is so happy that he, can't, he made the craziest mistake. He says, Allah, you're my servant, I'm your Lord. Why? Because he doesn't know what he's talking about. How come? Because he's so happy. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is even more happy and more appreciative and more glad than this person uh, finding his food. He is more happy with a person who turns to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and repents. I mean, I don't think we need any more a hadith than this. This is something that I hope is, is really motivates us tonight. I hope it really motivates us tonight to, uh, with, uh, you know, to start our du'as and ibadah. Again, in Chicago, there's only about eight or nine minutes left. But wherever you are listening from, if your night has begun or about to begin, I request you to please try to make our iftar real short today. Do not spend too much time in eating. Make it very short. And immediately after Maghrib Salah, let us start our ibadah. Let us not wait for you know, 12 o'clock. If you are uh, working today and tomorrow morning and you, uh, you're, you, know, you haven't been able to sleep much, at least do a few things. Make sure we are uh, praying our Isha and Fajr with Jama'ah. Try our best to perform our Salah with Jama'ah. He is the one who performs it with Jama'ah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him the reward of standing up the entire night in Ibadah. So uh, that is something, you know, inshallah, we should do. Second thing is uh, try to dedicate uh, a lot of time, majority of the time, if possible, besides the basic salah, of course, we have to perform salah to toba, salah to tarawi, uh, salah to um, um, uh, what's uh, 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 um, uh, tahajjud and salah to tasbih. Um, besides that, inshallah, ta just spend the rest of the time trying to do as much as dua as possible. Dua, dua, dua. That dua will include toba and istighfar and all the stuff that we've been talking about. One important point I want to mention regarding toba. I'm sorry, in dua, is that we have to make sure we are doing um, tawbah as well. Do not just say, Allah, forgive me. Say, Ya Allah, I'm repenting from such and such major sin, if Allah forbid if someone's involved in, or in the past was involved in. Say, Allah, I'm, I'm making repenting from this specific sin. And I've made a firm intention, Ya Allah, not to go back to that sin. Right? M not to go back to the sin. Um, and I am immediately stopping it, and I am um, uh, making the intention not to go back to it. And then, Ya Allah, this is my method of how I'm going to come out of this mess. If a person is repenting from haram loans, haram business, haram relationship, then we have to figure out how are we going to make it halal? How are we going to, uh, you know, to, uh, improve our ways? 
So that tawbah needs to be done, inshallah, tabarak wa ta'ala tonight. Many people neglect this. They make dua, they pray tahajjud, they do all this stuff, but they don't specifically sit and ask Allah forgiveness for specific major issues that they have. And they don't make an intention of leaving it that night for good. And they don't um, uh, show remorse to Allah specifically for those sins. So these are common mistakes that people make. We need to ensure that we don't make those mistakes. Uh, and additionally, let us dedicate time to do some dhikr. So subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al-azim, subhanallah wa bihamdihi, subhanallah al-azim. If we can recite this a hundred times, right? Uh, uh, if this, if if you can recite this a hundred times, inshallah, every single uh, night or any day, Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, your sins will be forgiven, even if they're equivalent to uh, the foam of the oceans. So please, let's make a habit of. Um, Let's make a habit every day, and if um, at least tonight, inshallah, definitely let's try to make a habit of reciting Subhanallah wa bihamdi, Subhanallah al a hundred times. Uh, along with that, we can do one hundred times Astaghfirullah, 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 asking forgiveness from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala at least a hundred times, and then we can recite Guru Sharif Salat like we usually do uh, before uh, before our talk ends. But today we won't get time. Inshallah, Mufti bin Haj will be leading Vikr um, uh, after his talk which starts at 9.15 Chicago, um, the Central Standard Time, inshallah. So you can join in for that. But along with that on your own as well, you can do 100 times salawat, 100 times istighfar, 100 times subhanallah wa hamdi, subhanallah al -azim. Then what's the other thing that we need to definitely forgive people, keep our hearts clean and forgive one another um, and ensure that we don't, we're not holding grudges. And if we have hurt someone, upset someone, ideally the best thing is that we reach out to them and seek forgiveness from them too. Additionally, uh, we should... No doubt, no doubt, give sadaqah tonight, 100%. If you haven't given your zakat yet, tonight is the night to give it. If you have not given sadaqah all, all along, please give every night, including tonight. Every single action, like we said at the beginning of our talk today, is going to be multiplied by hundreds and thousands of times. Remember, for those who join later on, one second of ibadah, we're looking at 23, 23 hours. One minute of ibadah, we're looking at 59 days of ibadah. We're looking at one hour of ibadah, we're looking at 9.8 years of ibadah. We're looking at the eight hours of ibadah, that's going to be equivalent to 83 years, subhanAllah. And that's minimum because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, remember, khayrun, it's better. It's better than a thousand months. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept that for, and inshallah, based on what I had shared, the, uh, the vision and whatnot of that scholar who reached out to me, who I had reached out to, alhamdulillah, tonight is very, very likely, Laylatul Qadr. So let us uh, plan, uh, plan it out right now. How are we going to spend the night and have our duas ready? Uh, um, if, you know, if, we are, if we are not uh, lost, we don't know how to make dua, pull up Khatm uh, quran dua from last year. You know, I'm serious. It's, it's, it's a long dua. Just follow along with that. We'll have our Khatm quran dua to, uh, Thursday night. But uh, tonight, Mufti bin Haj will also do a dua. Participate in that. But if uh, now in the middle of the night at 2 o'clock, you're saying, man, I really I want motivated. I don't even know what to ask, how to ask. Then you pull out one of the duas that we have from our previous khatams every year so that's here. They're half an hour long. And you can play with that and you keep on, you're making, those are your duas. And inshallah, that goal is to get you started. Once you hear these duas, inshallah, you will start also figuring out what you need to ask. Every person's got their own tons of issues. And there's the best is you, you make your own dua as well. Um, and we can recite through the, uh, the munajat maqbul. Tonight also at 2 a.m. we'll have the Hizbul Azam, which is the du'as of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So using that, that is a great opportunity as well to go through some of the du'as of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allahu Akbar. So we are pretty much done with time. I want to just uh, inform a couple announcements. Uh, Mufti Minhaj will start at 9:15, inshallah, the other program, um, uh, and then additionally our Khatm Quran program will start at 10 p.m. Uh, on Thursday night. So please do join us for that. Um, we have amazing uh, literature prepared for all of you. If you do not, if you're not on WhatsApp, if you're not getting our messages or emails, text message the masjid number or email us and all of it will be shared. Okay, so how to perform salat al tasbih was just shared. How to, um, uh, that was just shared. The dua card will be shared as well, if you wish. Um, uh, the, all the rules of Eid. Uh, we're going to have an Eid workshop, a complete Eid workshop, how to perform Eid salat at home. Mufti Minhaj will be doing this Friday evening. So please let people know and please participate for that workshop. So alhamdulillah, may Allah reward our staff. They've got you covered. They've got all the detailed write-ups for Sadaqat al-Fitr, for Eid, for the Takbirat, uh, for Laylatul Qadr. Everything, alhamdulillah, is covered. If you're not receiving these emails, uh, then you know, message us. If you don't get them on WhatsApp, please join the WhatsApp group so the brothers and sisters can receive those. Lastly, I want to uh, remind you all tonight on this Laylatul Qadr, as you are donating in Sadaqah to various organizations, do not forget Darussalam. 
We still have about 20 students that need to be sponsored and they are waiting to get sponsored. Alhamdulillah, we are definitely closer to our goal. So I request you to please work with your family members collectively. If people want to donate zakat via stocks, that's fine as well. Alhamdulillah, we've got that covered. You can reach us out. If you want to donate cash, jewelry, anything, you can drop off. We have a drop-off place here. You can come drop that off as well at the masjid. Uh, so kindly reach out to us by text message or phone. And, and please make your pledges aware tonight uh, as, as Muqtim Had speaks as well. We've got about 20 students that we're trying to take care of, inshallah, uh, for their uh, tuition. Uh, and, and, and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this blessed night that he accepts it and makes it, uh, makes it inshallah, allow, grant all of us the ibadat of Laylatul Qadr. May Allah make all of us mustajabu da'wat. May Allah make every one of you from amongst those whose du'as are always accepted. Subhanallah wa hamdihi. Subhanakallah wa hamdihi. Nashadu wa la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.